Alright, so for my next project, I'm going to do a smaller cabin job, okay? Now one of the problems with the cabin jobs and the, you know, the built-up box fuselage is that when you hit the fence, it's almost guaranteed it breaks the fuselage, alright? So for the Lanzo, I had to rebuild it three times, the Coda I've rebuilt it three times, and on and on. So that's kind of why I gravitated towards the more modern jobs, because with the balsa tube or a Kevlar tube or carbon fiber, you can hit the fence and it doesn't break. So they're a lot more durable. However, I noticed, uh, you know, like flying P-30s, like this one here, which are a lot lighter, that even when you hit something, it doesn't do that much because the weight's very low. So I'm hoping this time if I build a small cabin job that's fairly light, all right, then I'll be able to, uh, it'll be a lot more durable. I wouldn't have to keep rebuilding it all the time. So I'm looking for something around 24 inches, okay. I built a Flying Aces Moth many years ago. That was pretty nice, weighed about 35 grams, which is good because the equipment's down to about six, six and a half grams. And I've been looking around, but uh, the instant I saw this one, which was mentioned on Hip Pocket, I thought this is a great project. This is called the Island Flyer. It's fairly well known. Now, it's only got a 22-inch wingspan, but wow, look at that wing area. So I think this is going to be a really good flyer. Also, it's got plenty of room here for the radio control equipment. And uh, this looks like a lot of fun. So you can get the uh, plans at Hip Pocket Aeronautics. It's there. There's also a kit. I bought mine from uh, Penn Valley Hobby Center. You can also get it from FAI Model Supply. All right. So here's the kit. It's by RN Models. Okay. And uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of getting the kit. All right. So one of the disadvantages is you tend to get heavy balsa, but you can always substitute your own or there are ways you can deal with that. So for example, here are the ribs and the wing tips. Now I'm going to use the wing tips because those need to be strong. But this is like medium hard balsa it's, and it's about 332nd thick. It's a little too heavy for the ribs. So either you can substitute your own or the other thing you do is just sand it down and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sand this down probably to about a 32nd thick and that'll save a lot of weight. Same here. I'm not going to use, this is pretty hard so I'm not going to use a lot of this. I'm not going to use this. Now, I'm not going to use the front end fillers because in my experience, these planes tend, you have to add weight to the tail. So I'm going to use really light uh, balsa that I have for that. But I'll use it for the stab and rudder outlines because those need to be strong. I'll probably use lighter balsa for the gussets to save weight as well. Now, what I think is the really nice part of getting the kit is you get a whole assortment here of 332nd inch square balsa. And what I'm going to do first is weigh all of this, okay, and then order it from lightest to, uh, you know, hardest heaviest okay I already tried a few it ranges from two grams to uh, five grams all right now the good part about that is I'm going to try to cover the wing with uh, mylar so I want it to be strong so I'm going to use the hard ones for the leading edge and trailing edge and then I'll use the lighter ones for the tail okay another thing I do by the way when I build from printwood is I usually xerox them so if you need to replace parts at least you have it all all the parts that way okay uh, I'm pretty much going to build it as is. There's only one change I'm going to make, and that is this shows a 7-inch prop, and from my experience, that's too small for this size area. I'm going to use an 8-inch gizmo geezer, okay? The other thing I'll do is, you know, I make the landing gear plug-in. Uh, I'm going to lengthen them. Now, if you're flying in grass, you're fine, but I'm landing on cement, so I'm going to lengthen them about 3 quarters of an inch just to make sure the prop clears, all right? If you want to enter a contest, you can always plug in the smaller one or change the prop or do whatever you want. So this really looks like enormous fun. Okay, I'm going to get building it. Uh, try to keep, I'm hoping I can keep it maybe 40 grams or under. I'm not going to go nuts. Usually the first time I build something, I don't go for a super light because then you build it too weak. I usually build it first, weigh everything, and then the next time you build it, you, then you know what you can lighten up without sacrificing strength. Okay, so we're going to get going on this and we'll see how that goes. All right, so we're working on the Island Flyer. Okay, it goes together pretty quick. Uh, now one or two things, uh, when I build from print wood, basically what I do is I never cut it on the outline, alright? I like to leave a little extra, like a 30 second or so. It'll sand down really easy. And that way, you know, I think you can make it more accurate, okay? You can get it right on the line, basically, like this. And uh, the other thing I do is before I actually put it together, I actually sand off the print, the number in the print. Okay, and you got to do that before you put it together because otherwise if you get glue on it or something like that, you won't be able to sand the print off at that point. Alright, so you can see I did that for example with the rudder. Alright, here it is. Uh, you know, it's uh, once again I made my single pivoting rudder here, okay, because it's going to be RC rubber. Alright, I have to mount it a little differently this time. Normally what I do is mount the screw and then I just screw on the rudder, but you can't do that because the cabin's in the way. 
in this case. So I'm going to put the screw in from the bottom and put the rudder on that way. I'll show you when I get to it. Okay, so also the wing, you can see again I sanded all the print off. I, th I think it just looks nicer. And also I sanded all the ribs down to a 32nd because the wood was kind of heavy. Okay, in fact you can see here what I'm not using. Alright, so this is a uh, alignment part for the cabin but this wood is way too heavy I'm not using the filler either or any of the gussets so I'm using lighter wood for all of that okay and then I sorted the uh, 330 second squares as I mentioned before uh, I said 2 gram it's actually they weighed from 0.2 grams to 0.8 grams so I used the 0.8 gram for the leading edge because I kind of want to try to mylar cover this so I wanted it to be as stiff as possible now the other thing I found out is that with the 332nd square that they only have it on the top but it was just a little too flexible alright so I added a, another 332nd square on the bottom and if you wanted to make it even stiffer you could put a little 32nd you know uh, sheeting in there in, in between the space but I think this is stiff enough so that I could cover it with uh, mylar alright we'll see if it's not I can always dope tissue on it later on so we already got working on the cabin as well and now here I'm using the Bob Holman jig okay you can see this in my Jabberwock video and you know it, it's pretty small in this case you could do it the conventional way as well and you can see that in my Lanzo video alright but the thing I like about the jig is boy you can really get the shape per absolutely perfect and then all you gotta do is be and you know it's vertical as well right so all you gotta do is be careful and make sure you get in everything horizontal and you end up with a really nice square fuselage that way now the other thing I changed is here they had this block that was kind of the front I guess you cut a hole in it for the plug but I just put 332 by a quarter inch square here instead alright and I didn't use the former because I, I just did it all 332nd square to keep it nice and light and actually what I did is I sanded down that that front piece and now you can just use this as the plug basically okay so I'm gonna get this off the jig I gotta finish it up make the landing gear I gotta make some modifications for the RC and we'll see how that goes okay so we got it off the jig okay you can see I put on in 8 inch uh, gizmo geezer on the front there all right now for this balsa I used the lightest possible balsa I had because I'm worried it's going to be nose heavy uh, for the wheels you can see I glued a little nylon nut in there so I have a little hole down on the bottom so there's a little slot so you just slide the landing gear in there okay which is let me grab it it's over here you see here I just put a little piece of bass all right and then I kind of sunk the wire into it and glued it okay so that just slides into the bottom also I did make it a little bit longer so the prop should clear uh, I also made for the equipment here alright so you can see the servo just glues right in there I'm gonna use a little bit of five minute epoxy I put a little partition so if it hits something the equipment doesn't slam up against the servo and I also have a little exit because I am using the switch it just makes life easier here's the uh, equipment alright total weight as you see it here is 6.5 grams so it's not too bad you know I'm hoping this weighs maybe 35 40 grams but even if it was 30 it would still make my 20 percent rule of thumb all right um, also then I think I'm gonna have the Kevlar thread coming out of the fuselage so I put a little sheeting there where that's gonna go okay then these exposed surfaces on the inside I put a little bit of dope just uh, to seal them up from the rubber lube now you can see how I did the rudder basically I uh, glued in a little nylon nut all right in the fuselage and I left a little space so what I'm gonna do is just hold the rudder in place when everything is covered and uh, that way I can just you know screw it in from the bottom all right uh, the nylon nuts weigh next to nothing so uh, that's why I like doing it this way it's very very light I also put a little tail skid on and a little reinforcer because when you're landing on cement my experience the tail skids really take a beating okay so we're ready to get covering as I said I'm gonna do the wing stab and rudder just in a quarter mil uh, mylar I think that'll be fine and then I'm gonna try painting it so we'll see how this works out uh, for the fuselage I'm gonna use this which is poly span light I've had it sitting around for a while now if you look at my first tube stake video I used this for the stab the problem is it's a little too porous so you gotta put more dope on it so you don't really end up with any weight savings however for the cabin here who cares if it's porous it's not water soluble or anything so the lube's not gonna do anything so I'm thinking uh, I'll just use this for the cabin with two coats of dope and then I'll paint it okay that's actually lighter from what I can tell than doing tissue over mylar 
and the poly span's incredibly strong. That's what I like about it. It really takes a beating. And it's very easy to repair as well. All right, so we're gonna get covering, see how that goes, and get it finished up. Okay, so I got the windshield on and I got the equipment in. All right, so you can see it's I've got the orange 415 uh, you know, a receiver in there, and I've got the servo, the HKM282, and there's also a little battery in there, the uh, actually the smallest one kind of wedged in there. Now, usually before I go flying, I actually I put a little foam in like this just to kind of help hold it, you know, uh, in place there. It's usually not a problem. The servo is glued in, all right? So let me grab the receiver. I'm sorry, the transmitter. And I have it on, and I'll show you the, uh, here's the Kevlar pull pull. okay? Maybe over this way you get a better view. And uh, here we go. So there you go. There's the rudder. I think really got plenty of throw. I mean, if you hit the rudder that hard when you're flying, you'll probably end up in a dive. So this is plenty to keep it in the field, okay? So I'm going to get the rest of it together, and we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty happy with the way the Kevlar pull pull came out. It worked really well. I'm also glad I ended up putting it inside the uh, cabin there because originally I was thinking of having it stick up behind the wing, but this worked a lot nicer, I think. And you just need a couple little holes there uh, for the Kevlar to come out. All right, the Island Flyer, all done, ready to go. It was a really fun build, okay? Now, the polyspan light on the fuselage, I mean, it is pretty porous, but uh, I think it's going to be okay. It shouldn't affect it flying wise, all right? Uh, you can see I got the equipment in there. Now sometimes I glue the switch in, but uh, this time I didn't bother. I don't think you really need to. And plus it's nice to be able to take it out in case something happens. Uh, we got the Kevlar pull pull in there, as you can see, and I'm really happy with that. I think that worked pretty nice. All right, now the total weight was 36.2 grams, you know, without the equipment, which I think is pretty good. All right, uh, the equipment's another 6.5 grams. So the flying weight is, you know, 43 or something grams. All right, seems pretty light, but we'll find out when we get to the field. Now you can see I have the little hole down there for the uh, landing gear. Okay, I, I like doing it this way. It's very flexible, it's very light. Now over here I've got the motor, all right? And you can see I braided it lightly. And the reason I did that is if you don't braid it, you can't really put the hook on the back. And also, if you get knots in the rear or the front, then uh, it's gonna mess up the trim, all right? So the unbraided motor is 18 inches, it's four strands, 18 inches. Okay, that's what's on the plan. I don't know if that's what I'm gonna end up using. And I braided it down to about 16 inches. Now, it's only 12 inch distance from the uh, nose to the rear peg. So you might think there's gonna be some slack there, but what I found out is when I braided it down to like 14 inches, right? You'd think you'd have two inches of slack. The gizmo geezer didn't work right because it still has some winds on it and there was just too much tension and it didn't engage the screw. It's pretty amazing. I wouldn't have expected that if I didn't try it. So with the 16 inch, that seems to work fine. There's no knots uh, really on the motor when it's fully unwound and it gets rid of the bunching problem. And it's just neater and more organized. Okay, so we're gonna get out. Uh, hopefully it gets flying. I'm gonna move this actually to the top of my new plane flying list uh, because it just looks like a lot of fun and we'll see how that goes.